Welcome to Ogle's channel. Thanks for watching today. Let's talk about a cheese or easily defeat the nameless puppet in the lies of P. And you finally made it here. It's the final boss in the entire game. No more optional bosses. This is it. The end of the game. Now, before we go into this boss fight, we are going to have to go grocery shopping. So we're heading over to our favorite place in the Malum District in the Lobster Hotel. Climb the little ladder here, and we're going to buy the following things from the uh, merchant. Thermite, throwing cell, body fluid, saw blade, sharp pipe, shot put, as well as an electric abrasive, and you're going to want to buy the max number that your character can possibly carry. We also want to have equipped for this fight the Aegis Legion Arm, which we're going to use to block. It's going to come in super handy, and especially in Stage 1. But now we got all of our grocery shopping done, let's head on into the boss fight. Now as soon as you enter the fog gate, do not even move, just simply put the electric abrasive on and then go ahead and put up your Aegis shield and just simply wait for him to come to you. Do not run out to him because every time he hits you, if your Aegis shield up, it's going to knock you backwards and you want to be up against the wall so you can minimize how far you get knocked back every single time. When he first attacks you, the Aegis shield is going to have an explosion, it's going to give him damage and then just keep the shield up and continue to stab over the shield with your uh, R1 button. And just by doing this with the electric attack, you're going to watch his HP melt away very very quickly here occasionally he'll get stunned back a little bit at this point go ahead and let the shield down and go up and get a few slices in don't get greedy and then put your shield back up and just wait for him to attack you again in order to go for the same strategy all over again honestly if he never does his special charge up move you can probably get through this entire stage without taking like any damage or any significant damage uh, but if he does do his little red charge move or his uh, stagger move you probably will get hit because that generally goes through the edge of shield but have no fear when he's stunned a little bit that's the perfect opportunity to heal back up but for the most part stage one here all you need to do is keep that shield up and just simply continue to stab over it and you'll have stage one defeated in no time with a uh, very minimal damage now stage two, we're going to take a completely opposite approach to fighting him here. And we're going to do a runaway method and just simply dodge all the attacks that we can and keep that distance. And that's when we're going to unload all the throwables that we purchased. But there are only certain instances that you can really get these throwables out because otherwise he's going to come at you and just do a combo you and just simply destroy you in no time. So when this stage first starts up, I recommend just simply run away as far as possible to get away from him. Now generally his first attack is where he basically uh, zooms across the arena, does a little slice move, and it can be pretty powerful on you. And uh, as soon as you see him start to do that move, just simply dodge to the right and you can almost avoid it every single time. And at that point, you do not want to run straight off to the other side of the arena for the distance. You want to start doing a circle method around the arena and keeping your distance as far as like going around the outside perimeter here. And by doing that, you're going to have the max amount of distance throughout the most of the battle. And that way you can really bait out the moves that you want him to do the most and really get in there and punish him. But now that we got our position strategy down, let's talk about the moves that we can punish the most in this fight with our throwables. Now the first one is going to be where he flies up in the air and then he sort of comes crashing down towards you while swinging his little blades around. When he goes up in the air, when he starts coming down towards you, roll into that attack. And so you're going to roll under him. And when he slams into the ground, that gives you an opportunity to unload several throwables on him at that particular moment. And naturally, like always, don't get greedy. Just throw a few of them out there and then start running away and continuing that same perimeter strategy that we talked about earlier, keeping that distance. And we're going to wait till our next opportunity. Now, another good opportunity to punish him is when he sort of uh, combines a sword and he does a stab move that has that red blade comes out in front of it. When you first see him start to do this move, make sure you have the max amount of distance between you and him and that move cannot hit you. But after he does it two or three times, he's going to jump in the air and he's going to slam down and he's going to have a little red explosion. As long as you're not close to him, not a big deal. And at this point, he sort of, uh, I guess, stunned a little bit. And you can take several of your throwables and throw them out at this particular moment. Once again, building up that damage. These are the two best opportunities to continue to punish him. However, if at any point during the battle, if you know there's a lot of distance and he's just simply walking, that's also a good opportunity to go ahead and get some throwables out there. You don't want to get greedy, maybe just one or two, and then continue to keep that distance. It's all about not getting greedy here. Now, if he does come at you and you don't have the distance, you know, exactly where you want it to be, and he starts slicing away at you, simply roll backwards. And if you roll backwards, you will avoid the majority of the attacks. I can't guarantee all of them because he's pretty darn fast. It depends on your rolling ability and the weight of your character. But uh, for the most part, if you roll backwards, that's going to be your best strategy to avoid most of these attacks. Honestly, at this point in the game, if you've made it this far and you're not parrying a whole lot, you're probably pretty good at dodging anyway, and so uh, simply rolling backwards to dodge the attacks is going to be your best bet. But truth be told, if you keep the distance, you're not going to be dodging near as much simply because most of his attacks will not even get to you. Now, if you unload every throwable that you have, it's going to take away pretty much his entire HP here. However, um, if you do miss one here and there, you may have to, at the very close of it, go up and get a few slices in on one of the opportunities to punish him and just end the battle that way. To me, this is probably the hardest boss battle in the entire game, which I like that because it's the final boss in the game, so it matches up 
really well here. But um, if you follow these strategies, keep your distance, don't get greedy, dodge through and punish the correct attacks like we mentioned in this video, you should have them defeated in no time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, check my other videos listed up above. As always, go out there, find a great game to play, simply have a great rest of the day.
Nurjasta. Useless. <laughs> 